Hello, I'm Fred Schneider, and you're tuned in to The Weekly Report, a look at news and insight related to programs and services provided by departments of the City of Kansas City, Missouri. The City's Building Code program has been rated in the top 2% nationwide for commercial and industrial properties and in the top 18% for one- and two-family residential properties by Insurance Services Office, Inc. Insurance companies frequently use these ratings to assess risk and determine homeowner and commercial premiums. Therefore, receiving a favorable rating may result in reduced insurance costs for some Kansas City structures. City crews are installing 352 lane miles of bike routes, as well as share the road signs throughout Kansas City's residential streets. The signage will not only guide cyclists as they travel, but also help identify which streets are bicycle friendly. To learn more about Kansas City's bike system, visit kcmo.org slash bikekc. Now let's check in with some of our city's departments for information and insight. Hi, I'm Heidi Downer with Kansas City Parks and Recreation. This spring, the department is sponsoring many fun activities at your city facilities. Come admire local street art at the Chalk Walk in historic Northeast Kansas City on the weekend of April 27th and 28th. This free festival runs from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. both Saturday and Sunday at Kessler Park where hundreds of artists will showcase their creativity by painting the concourse with pastel chalk and water. The event includes live music and other activities. For more information, see chalkwalk.org. Ride the Fountains is coming on Sunday, June 9th. Be sure to sign up by April 24th for this annual bicycle tour to make sure you receive a pair of commemorative cycling socks. This year's ride around the city's beautiful fountains and historic landmarks begins at 8 a.m. at Union Station. Plan to stay afterwards for a special 40th anniversary of the City of Fountains Foundation with live music, food trucks, a photo booth, and more. Register now at ridethefountains.com. Get on board Saturday, May 11th for a double celebration of National Train Day and the 20th anniversary of the Kansas City Northern Miniature Railroad at Frank Vedic Park located at Northwest 60th Street and Wacomas Drive. The fun begins at noon with live music, face painting, and the Zoomobile. There will also be two-for-one ice skating at Lime Creek Ice Arena from 2 to 4 p.m. Details are at kcparks.org or kcnrr.com. To learn more about other events scheduled by Parks and Recreation, visit the department's website at kcparks.org or give us a call at 816-513-7500. Attention Kansas City, it's time to save the date and spread the word. On April 26th, it's the fifth annual Civil Rights and Fair Housing Summit at the Southeast Community Center in Kansas City, Missouri. Join us and participate in a panel discussion and informational workshops. Hear from keynote speakers Mark Lamont Hill and James Perry as they discuss the turning points in our struggle for civil rights. This is a free event and lunch will be provided. To register, please call 816-513-1842 or register online. The itchy, watery eyes, the runny nose, the sneezing means allergy season has hit Kansas City. Here at the Health Department, we have some information on allergies and some tips for decreasing the symptoms. An allergy is characterized by an overreaction of the body's immune system to a foreign substance called an allergen that can be eaten, inhaled into the lungs, um, touched, or um, injected. Um, when someone has an allergic reaction, it can result in runny nose, itchy eyes, scratchy throat, um, and possibly in severe cases lead to rashes, hives, difficulty breathing, asthma, and possibly death. Um, allergy symptoms peak in April and May, and in Kansas City, roughly 20% of all emergency department visits will be due to allergies. 
Um, one in five Americans has an allergy, and the costs associated with allergies can reach up to $14.5 billion a year. So there's no cure for allergies, but there are a few steps you can take to limit your exposure. The first to alleviate symptoms if you do have allergies is to take allergy medication or immunotherapy. To prevent exposure to allergies, you may want to avoid going out during days of high pollen count. Um, you can find out when these days are based on the internet or your local radio station. Stay indoors on dry, windy days. Um, if you're going to be working outside in your yard, try to delegate tasks and also wear masks. After coming back inside, uh, be sure to take a shower and rinse off any pollen that might be clinging to your clothes. Avoid hanging your laundry out to dry on the line as pollen can become attached to your fresh laundry. Allergies in Kansas City are very common, and we would like to do everything we can to reduce the burden of allergies in our community. So please talk to your doctor if you're concerned about your allergies to see if there is any treatment the doctor can give you to make sure you have a great spring this year. For more information on allergies, visit the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention website at www.cdc.gov or visit the Asthma and Allergy Foundation of America's website at www.aafa.org. In the past year, our area has endured several pedestrian fatalities on the interstates that could have been avoided. With the longer daylight hours and warmer weather, more people are outside, walking, jogging, etc. With some sound advice, here is MoDOT's Incident Management Coordinator, Rusty James. Now we have had a number of incidents in the Kansas City area in the past winter and even in, in times when weather is good where people have gotten out of their cars when it's either broken down or they've been involved in a crash or some other incident and they have been struck by vehicles while they were outside their car. If you have a problem with your car, whether it's you're involved in a crash or it's broken down or it's a weather related issue, you need to make a determination yourself. Is it, am I safer in my car or would I be safer getting out of my car? The vast majority of the times we have found that people would be safer staying inside their car. It does provide some protection. But if you determine that it's safer for you to get outside your car, what we would ask is that you get as far away from your car as you can and get behind a barrier. If, and when you do have a problem with your car, again, whether it's a crash or a breakdown, if you'll just call 911 and tell the dispatcher that you need some assistance from Motorist Assist, they'll dispatch one of the MoDOT Motorist Assist units to you as quickly as possible and they can come out and help you with whatever the problem is and provide safe traffic control. And if you do need the assistance of the MoDOT Motorist Assist units, there's never any charge for that. We come out and assist whether we change a tire, maybe do some minor mechanical repairs, give you a little gasoline. Sometimes we push the cars. We do whatever we can to get you back on the road again and there will never be a charge for our assistance. Uh, the interstate highways especially, but any high volume roadway such as the interstates, U.S. highways and some of the state highways are very dangerous. There's really never a time when it's safe for a pedestrian to be walking on those highways. Traffic is moving very quickly, pedestrians are hard to see, and it's probably one of the most unsafe situations that we, that we have. KCPD Sergeant Randy Sims is a 26-year veteran of the force and his years in the Accident Investigation Unit required him to bear witness to some horrific scenes. I spent 10 years in our Accident Investigation Unit and was involved in investigating over 400 fatality accidents. Unfortunately, several of those included uh, pedestrians uh, walking on the side of the road. Uh, the combination of a human body with uh, the metal on a car and the velocity of a car is not good. Uh, I would highly recommend that uh, you plan in advance uh, and have in your car a reflective vest. For a few dollars you can pick up uh, one of these emergency kits and many of them have reflective vests in there and if you should be disabled on the side of the road that you uh, wear this protective vest even in the daytime uh, but especially at night. Unless you absolutely have to walk on the side of the road, you shouldn't do it. Uh, there's just been far too many people struck and killed by inattentive drivers that uh, for whatever reason might drift off to the side of the road and strike, uh, strike a pedestrian. 13% of all traffic fatalities are pedestrians and 90% of them happen on clear days. One interesting note, 
When alcohol is involved in a pedestrian death, the cause is two times more likely to be drunk walking rather than drunk driving. I'm Officer Shelley Gaddis. Please drive safe. This project is a long time in the making. Uh, it's taken a lot of people working hard to do some design work and obviously secure the resources to make it happen. It's a total of about $2.3 million. Uh, the funds are coming from the ATA, they're coming from the city of Kansas City, Missouri, and they're coming from the federal government, uh, of course, thanks to Congressman Cleaver to make that happen. We have several folks who would like to make some comments this morning, and uh, to get started, I'd like to introduce uh, John Paul Sharon, and John Paul is the president of the Kansas City, Missouri Board of Park Commissioners. We're very excited, obviously, about the project and the partners that we have, uh, and we're looking forward to connecting this fantastic sort of boulevard. When people think of Parks and Rec, they always think of the park system, they think of community centers. They uh, sometimes forget the boulevards, and these uh, boulevards is what distinguishes us as a city, and we're really excited to once again make some uh, significant improvements to uh, a great boulevard named after a great man. And the third thing I've sort of learned after doing these speeches is that you do not want to go after uh, Emmanuel Cleaver in speaking. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to our uh, Congressman, uh, Reverend Emmanuel Cleaver. Thank you. It's easy uh, to try to get federal dollars to come into a project like this uh, because you have the private and the public sectors meeting uh, right here. Uh, and, and, and when we begin to do this uh, streetscape uh, program, it further enhances the community and the east side of Kansas City will never, ever, ever be redeveloped to its maximum potential until we have economic development east of Truce. And this will attract economic development. The, the nicer we make it, the better it's going to be for everyone because uh, if, it, you know, nobody's going to create a business uh, because they want to create a business. They create a business because they want to make money. And in order to make money, you got to have the environment looking uh, like it is a worthwhile place to go. And that's what's taking place right here. So you have a private sector meeting with the public sector and good things uh, are happening. I would also mention this is the green impact zone. Uh, and, and just uh, to our south, Kansas City Power and Light Company has this huge battery, uh, one of the largest batteries in the world, ju just uh, uh, across the street. And so good things are happening here, not far from here. Uh, we make it right is 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 uh, uh, rebuilding a, an old rundown school, uh, and and that's going to be helpful. And we got we have our council people here: uh, Councilwoman Melba Carroll's third district, uh, Councilman Jermaine Reed, uh, and right down the street is a, a church, uh, pastored by Councilman uh, Brooks, Michael Brooks. And so we, we when you get all of us together, I mean we're not bickering and fighting and. Uh, trying to uh, shut down the government. We're, we're trying to make a community work. And that's the beauty of, of, of our community right now. So I'm very thankful uh, and pleased uh, that this is actually an old earmark. But I want to make sure everybody understands I'm not opposed to getting new earmarks. <laughs> and I believe at this point it's time to uh, break some ground or shovel some dirt. Kind of head that direction. Looking ahead, the city's spring curbside leaf and brush collection is nearing completion as residents in the North Zone will have their collection the week of April 15th. On their scheduled trash pickup day, Northland residents may leave up to 20 bags or bundles of leaves and brush on their curb. To find out when your pickup day is, visit kcmo.org trash and click on leaf and brush collection. Kansas City will participate in the Show Me Green sales tax holiday from April 19th through the 25th. During this week, state and city sales tax will be eliminated from Energy Star qualified appliances purchased in Kansas City, Missouri. In addition, county tax will be eliminated from appliances purchased in the Clay, Platte, and Cass County areas of Kansas City. Eligible appliances valued at $1,500 or less include washers, dryers, refrigerators, and dishwashers, among others. 
The city will partner with the city market and surplus exchange to host Get Your Green On, an electronics recycling event. This event takes place on Saturday, April 20th from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. at 3rd and Walnut Streets in the city market. Residents may recycle their large televisions, computers, and printers for a small fee and recycle their microwaves, desktop printers, fax machines, cell phones, and more for free. For more information about this or any of today's stories, please log on to kcmo.org, scroll to the bottom right-hand corner, and click on the Weekly Report for links. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. I'm Fred Schneider. Have a great week!